Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How are you? I hope all is well. Welcome to the channel Russians to Florida. Today we are doing something different. We're changing it up. We're going to be doing it in English simply because we have been asked this question quite often. And it's from people from New York, Chicago, LA, and a few other places within the United States. And uh, my guest today feels a little more comfortable speaking in English uh, versus in Russian, even though she is marvelous, fabulous, intelligent woman who speaks, I believe, Russian, English, Spanish, French. Um, what was the other language? What, what am I missing? I'm sorry? Italian. Italian. I think there's like seven languages in the mix. <laughs> But anyway, as you could see that she is amazing, very smart. She is a doctor. Uh, besides a doctor, she's a great wife, a mom. So her opinions that we're going to get to hear tonight are not only based from her professional standpoint, but from her experiences as a parent and as a psychologist. I'd like to introduce this wonderful, beautiful woman here right, right now, uh, Marjola. Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure being here. Um, please tell me a little bit about yourself. How did you start out with what you're doing? Where did you start out? And a little bit of what got you to this point, how you got to Florida, just the background information. Okay. Well, originally I'm from Albania and I've been in the United States for a while, um, approximately 23, 24 years. And most of my career I actually did have in Boston, Massachusetts, where I graduated um, from college as well as masters and uh, CAGS. And then I continued on with a doctorate program for education. So my first and second degrees were in psychology and uh, special education. And the third one was in educational leadership. Um, at this point, I I'd say that I've had maybe about 15 uh, to 16 years of experience. And she's very young, mind you guys. <laughs> and... Um, I do enjoy working with children and parents from all areas, including like private and public schools. Um, some of the parents from charter schools as well have been very interested in some guidance. In general, I see that there is a big difference between Northeast and Florida. So people always come and ask specific questions. I don't know if there was anything in particular you wanted to discuss about yeah. the schools. So one of the things that we've been asked quite often within our channel, people write to us, call us. I got a really weird call today asking me, what is, uh, what do I think is a good location for them to buy a house? Mm. Get asked that all the time. And you know, I the first thing I ask them is, how far do you want to be from the beach? Because I don't <laughs> think that should that really should matter. You're moving yes. here. Obviously, you're moving for different reasons. Yes. But the main reason is this is a beach town. So my first question is not what schools you're going to, mm -hmm. do you, you know, like what is your preference, but how far you want to be from the beach. If you want to be within five minutes from the beach, East Boca it is. Ten minutes from the beach, 10 to 15, I mean, central mm -hmm. Boca. Yes. If you don't mind being further then go to West Boca. So that's my first thing. But then, you know, that, that spark happens and people are like, wait, hold on, I have kids. So they kind mm -hmm. of remember that at that point they have kids. And I always yeah. say, okay, well, you should have started out with that. So like, what is, what are you looking? So, and then they start with, well, I have a, you know, like a five-year-old, a seven-year-old, we need a good elementary school, but then we're buying for the next 10 years. And I'm mm -hmm. like, I don't even know what I'm doing, what I'm eating for breakfast tomorrow, but they're <laughs> buying for 10 years already. You know what I mean? So tell me, I know that Boca has been changing. Yes. Since I think it started way before COVID. Yes. Correct me if I'm wrong. I know you guys moved here five years ago, six years ago? Approximately six years ago from right. Boston, yes. And a lot more people since then have moved, correct? Substantially more people. Boca used to be an area where elderly would actually come in and spend their, you know, about end days. 10, the end, day, end days in here. And right now, it is pretty much unaffordable for people who are pensioners to come over here and... Um, 
spend their end days. So you will see that there are substantially more young couples. young couples coming in with young children. Businesses are blooming. Therefore, you have more and more people who are right. coming in and working in here. But I think, the, I'm sorry to interrupt you. What I, what I wanted to ask was, um, I think one of the things that now, you said businesses are blooming. Mm-hmm. One of the biggest things that I've noticed is that it's not really businesses that are like, yes, people are coming in, they mm-hmm. have money, they're coming in here with lots of money. But what I think that's happening right now is people are just so fed up with the the political aspect mm-hmm. of Boston. I'm talking about the Democratic states, but we're not going to get into politics here. So they are moving here. So partially, yes. many of the moves are coming here because of the, you know, the political aspect. But mm-hmm. many came here specifically to Boca because of schools. Correct. So you did this... You, this was your reason why yes, you came here. Yes, that was one of the primary reasons in here. However, it is a wonderful place. I mean, look at it geographically, look at the way people are changing in here. So for us, when we looked at it for the long run, obviously Boca made a lot of sense. Um, the other thing is, no matter where you are in Boca, you'll have some good schools, you'll have some great schools, you'll also have some not so great schools so that's something to keep in mind Mm -hmm. that it's not just like everywhere else you'll have the good and you'll have the bad in terms of location and what is the best location that is more of a financial decision for the family where would they like to be Um, what can they afford what would be their comfort zone what are they looking for in schools you have Uh, a lot of parents who are actually looking primarily, okay, who do I want my kids to be close to? What kind of programs do the schools have to offer? And West Boca, for example, has some great programs uh, that children would love to attend to, parents would love uh, to have their their kids in, you know, some of the lottery programs in in West Boca in middle school and above. They include pre-med, pre-law, and it's wonderful mm-hmm. to see. I mean, like a fifth grader is actually learning all the the terminology in Latin for either or. Mm-hmm. And you can see that they are looking forward to it. They also have, um, you know, after school programs that are substantially more enriched than other schools who are not either charter or who do not have that extra budget for the right. after school program. Right. So I, I, that's what I want to get into. So I know for a fact um, um, in East Boca, we'll, right. we'll, we'll start with, and this was asked tremendously mm-hmm. um, and discussed actually with me. Mm-hmm. So I know that um, there's JC Mitchell, which is an elementary school. We'll start with elementary schools. There's JC Mitchell and then there's um, uh, Meisner. Okay, so Edison Meisner, Ed- Edison Meisner is mm-hmm. considered a really good school. It's rated pretty high. Mm-hmm. Um, J.C. Mitchell, not as high. Again, a decent school, smaller in size. Mm-hmm. It's what you prefer. So there are negatives and positives to every school in Boca. Now, yeah. in comparison to New York, mm-hmm. I, I don't know Boston schools, but I do know New York schools. Mm-hmm. And in comparison to New York, most schools here are still under the student teacher ratio where the, it's still pretty good i think right Correct. now the student to, uh, student to teacher ratio is about 14 to 1. in new york when i was leaving it was 29 mm-hmm. to 1. and that is drastically changing in here right and i can say for example five years ago jc mitchell over here uh, they had a fantastic uh, gifted program my kid went in there for a few years on a row and their gifted program was wonderful. They started by first grade, actually by kindergarten, they were already writing paragraphs for parents who really are looking into that accelerated uh, learning rate for mm-hmm. their children. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a newer school for a lot of the parents also, obviously they want to make sure that there is a large quarters in there for the children to hang out, for children Mm -hmm. to do things Mm -hmm. uh, other than just learning um, and sitting down. Edison Meisner is considered a better school than J.C. Mitchell is. Mm -hmm. However, the overall area in there is smaller. 
Right. Uh, the school it's even is smaller. I, I did see it. And it is older. Correct. Yeah. It's a very small school. I happen to really, by the way, guys, I happen, I happen to really, really like Addison Meisner. I went in there and that was kind of the reason um, why we were actually for a while considering to move into central, I mean, East Boca, because yeah. I really like the idea behind Addison Meisner, not the grades, not anything else. But if you walk in there, it's a very small, mm -hmm. it's an older building. Yes, I give it. But so every school in New York right. and every school in New York doesn't even have ACs. And every school in New York, the bathrooms don't flush. <laughs> and what was the last time they cleaned it? Okay, so if you think about it from that perspective, so if you compare it to the the best school in, in Brooklyn to the worst school here, it's still going to be better. So please take it with that understanding that we're comparing the schools here, not only to now, but in the different types of schools that are here, but also to what was five years ago yeah. that um, Marjola remembers. And... We're kind of just trying to also build a picture for you in the sense that everything is changing. So you yes. can't really rely on the aspect of what we're saying now. Schools are changing, but they're still going to be better. So I just wanted to go back to that initial point and, right. and make sure that we do answer that question about the ratio that you mentioned. Right. Uh, so most schools had a really good ratio in here. It was like a 1 to 14. Most schools are no longer at that ratio. Right now, even within the gifted program, they are at 1 to 28. Oh, wow, okay. They have a teacher assistance in, but it's not the same. Also, most gifted programs have changed. Now you no longer have gifted, you have gifted and uh, high achievers. Mm. That means that children with an average IQ can get into the high achieving classes where they perform better. They could kind of like hop between classes, mm -hmm. but usually most high achievers and gifted, um, they have a very similar schedule, accelerated program, as long as they can keep up with the work. Do you think that that's really unfair to the gifted and talented children versus regular I think kids that and getting that opportunity? Like, correct. I think, I think that Boca is changing very fast as it is most of Florida. Right. Um, it has the pros and the cons. I think that in Northeast, like in Massachusetts, for example, they used to have fantastic gifted programs right. and they almost disappeared. They are only in two or three um, places. Uh, can and I tell the you reason something? is that public education and regular education can no longer afford to support these kind of programs. Right. Guess what? They took it completely off in New York. There yes. is no more gifted and talented in New York. So the yes, fact that we actually still it. have it mm -hmm. here is already a huge plus, Correct. ladies and gentlemen. And that's the one thing that I wanted to bring up is that there are programs still here. Yes. In spite of everything, every school has the gifted and talented programs. We don't... Um, Not I, every school, but most, most schools, schools have do. it from what I understand, right? However, if your child is truly a gifted and talented child right. and they do belong in a gifted program even if they should reach you out buy to the a school. house <laughs> sure no problem um i'll certainly help you navigate the system but even if you buy a house in an area where the gifted program does not exist for right. that particular school they would go to the closest school that has the gifted and talented and there, and there are from what i've checked last time i think like most of the schools have a uh, gifted and talented i right. don't i mean there's only some some schools I believe, uh, does J.C. Mitchell still have it? I, I'm just yes, not. Yes, J.C. Mitchell has it, and it has had a bit, it, it, it's been there for a while. It's been there, right? Yeah. However, I, I most schools realize that it does bring more funding. As such, they did open them. So you will have certain schools that are substantially better, even within the gifted and talented programs. Right. They are substantially better because they've been doing it for longer. They have more gifted and talented teachers, teachers who work over there, even the regular education teachers do have plenty of experience with gifted and talented kids. Right. So That's yes, true. there is, I mean, when you're looking at statistics online, even like parents talking about them, you'll see that certain schools will rate higher than the others. Right. Yeah. So the other thing, um, now going down the neighborhoods, we'll discuss now Central Boca and Central Boca has Verde, 
Del Prado, Cal Calusa, right? Yes. Am I getting them correct? I'm, we're just discussing elementary schools right now. Um, I know that Del Prado rates, one of I the think, best the highest, ones. and then it's like Calusa and Verde are at about the same correct. rating. Again, very good schools. Um, Calusa is rating a little bit higher because like we just discussed off camera, they mm -hmm. had a, a rebuild. The school was completely revamped. They now mm -hmm. have... Um, a new building building quarters at the school is pretty new so is um verde right they also just Correct. revamped everything but given that calusa used to be a very small school now that they are bigger they obviously have a higher funding they have more teachers that are dedicated there from right. the actual school district uh, they have to make sure that they are responding to the numbers to the increased number of students in right as they expanded they obviously need to get more teachers. They need to get more teachers. However, this is something that in most areas, in most public schools in here, uh, they are still trying to catch up with. The numbers are changing so fast. So many people are coming from New York, New Jersey, Northeast in general, that they are still not fully caught up with the teachers, with the programs. Um, let me ask you this so we we've done east we've done central so mm -hmm. west i know we talked about right off camera we talked about loggers run which is an amazing school then there's whispering pines yes. um there are so i i don't want to go back and forth between discussing different schools yep. Um, if you do have questions, you could always reach out to us. I'll be more than happy to write to Marjola and ask her. But mm -hmm. like everywhere else, there are bad schools and good schools. Again, I'll go back to saying schools in Boca will be drastically better than any school in New York right now. Number one, they're not fully in person. Our schools here are fully in person, right? Correct. All the schools are open, operating at 100%. Mm -hmm. The kids go into school. They are served lunch. They are taught the whole day. And they are kept safe, meaning the numbers are not extreme, correct? Correct. The numbers are pretty low. There is still an option for parents who want to actually keep their kids at home. But there is a drastic difference between parents and children who go to schools in Boca and the ones, for example, in Parkland. Just next door, Parkland is still doing substantially, um, majority of their days is still actually online. Online. Only recently, uh, their middle school started going full time. So for all you guys really quickly um, that don't know, Parkland is not Palm Beach County. Palm Beach County is the only county that has allowed the kids to return yes. to school full time. Broward and I think Miami Dade is not a hundred percent yet. Um, even though Parkland is our neighboring uh, area, and most people that I've spoken to that have moved in there do love it. However, it's all the way out west. It is about thirty minutes away from the beach. Um, it, it it is a, a world in itself. There are few good schools there, right? Yes. The only reason why I brought it up was because there are substantially more Russians moving into Parkland. Uh, parents and families in general who cannot afford to buy in Boca, buy in Parkland. Well, you, I think um, you get a lot more for your buck in Parkland. The houses are right. newer, bigger, but it is a different county. Like I said, um, the Broward County is not as um, rich. Can I say that? I mean, I think... Well, it's certainly not as affluent as uh, as our county in here. Rich. That's so. that's basically what For those in lamest terms, rich meaning we get more money. We pay more money for, you know, for our schools to have more things. Correct. But the you reason know why that. you say affluent is also because, in general, the background of the, the population is substantially right. higher. So in here, you'll have more parents with a higher degree than you would have in Broward County. Okay, there you go. That answers a lot. As far as within Boca, so besides pri uh, public school, there are many amazing private schools. And yes. I know that Marjola's kids are in private school mm -hmm. by choice. They've decided this because they feel like their kids could do better there. Again, guys, this is not a thing where public schools are bad here and so everybody should go to private. No, it is their personal choice because they felt that their kids would be doing better in this structure. Does that mean that your kids are going to be doing worse or better? No. 
but this is what they chose. So can you tell me a little bit about the private schools? I know that there's very bougie right around the corner from our house is Pinecrest. So is St. Andrews. I've only heard about them and I feel like it's the Holy Grail. So every single time I drive by there, I go, Holy Grail. So can you tell me a little bit about those so, schools? Briefly, I want to say there are a lot more private schools in here than you'd probably see up north per capita. Right. Um, majority of them are religious based. I'm going to leave the religion out of it yes. because that is not something that you would necessarily be interested in. Parents who are very religious, they obviously go towards those denominations. Um, in terms of the general private schools that are considered pretty good, you already named them. Um, However, I would say there is a great difference between the child's age. In other words, Pinecrest and um, North Broward Prep and St. Andrews are great schools. However, I would consider them even better for late um, middle school and high school kids. Mm -hmm. So for my kids, I would have wanted something smaller. Again, it really depends on the parents, on the family, on the needs of the kid. Uh, personally, I prefer something smaller. Um, I want to make sure that the ratio is there. In terms of, you know, 1 to 10, 1 to 12, that's the kind of ratio that I'd like. If I'm paying that kind of money, then I want, mm -hmm. I want to make sure that the needs are met. Two questions. Oh, do you mind sharing where your kids are attending, the name of the school? And the second question is, um, what are the prices? What should people expect if they will consider a private school? I'm not mm -hmm. talking about the dowries and all of this other stuff. Right. By the way, yes, it, it's true. You have to give donations. It's kind of, it's, it's a common thing like it is in New York. It is a common thing here as well. Right. What are the tuitions? What are we looking at? Tuitions vary usually from 15 to 50, depending on the school. There are a couple of good uh, French American schools around here. They are still functioning at elementary and middle school level for Russian parents who really want their kids to learn in French and in English at the same time. Uh, and they are at about 15 to 20 mm -hmm. grand per year. And then you have the other schools that you mentioned. Uh, obviously, those schools are closer to 30, anywhere between 26 to 35. I thought Pinecrest um, was like around 38. That has uh, increased, increased uh, yet Dress. again. Yet again, yes. Yet again. Pinecrest does go up because it's a very, very um, affluent school. Correct. Uh, just so everybody knows, Pinecrest is, there are two locations. There's one in Boca and there's one, I believe, near Jupiter, around that area. There is one in Fort Lauderdale. In the Boca the Boca campus is the elementary school. No, I know there's and one in, the, in I th is it in Fort Lauderdale? Fort Lauderdale campus is the one for high school. Oh, um, so from what I've heard, our 411, inside 411, is that Baron Trump will be attending uh, Pinecrest in Fort Lauderdale. <laughs> Don't ask me how I know, but this is the 411 that we've gotten. Anyway, so I do know that these are great schools, and this is something for you guys to consider when moving it to Boca. But don't give up hope on public schools because like we've mentioned these are great public schools with great educators uh, Marjola works with them all the time she is in the school she does observe the kids she talks to the parents and and I think that if you compare them to what they're coming from this will be a, a better option yes. but what I my personal opinion what you guys should do is what we did we came to Boca and we just got in the car and drove around we went by every school and we observed how they are. For instance, I was shocked when I saw Spanish River High School. I have never in my life have seen such a big school mm -hmm. with their own football team. Yes. I mean, we, we've observed it. They have this huge campus. Yes, given they have so many kids there. But my oldest daughter is in Midwood High School right now with about 4,000 students in one building. And their stadium is about a 30 minute drive. And again, that's uh, a lot of people prefer some, some majority of the people would prefer smaller schools. However, when children get to that middle and obviously high school, they would prefer much larger a schools. Larger school. They would prefer to have more of a choice in peers and classes and so on and so forth. So, right. 
Thank you so much. You've been very Welcome. insightful. We absolutely love having you. And I hope you do come back to our show and tell us more and open up our eyes to other things. Boca, we yeah. do appreciate your opinion and love it. And guys, if you have any questions specifically to schools, relate them to us and we'll be more than happy to um, ask Marjola to provide us feedback. Absolutely. And if you are moving here and are looking to test your child for gifted and talented, Marjola does that. And we will provide the info whenever you guys are ready yeah. and she'll help you navigate the system. Thank you guys once again. And we really appreciate you coming to our channel, liking us, sharing <laughs> us, and we'll be coming in with many new videos Talk to you soon.